Hello everybody, welcome back to Universe Sandbox. Today I'm going to be making the ultimate terraforming tutorial. After this video you should be able to take any rocky planet and turn it into a habitable planet that can support life easily. Alright, so how we're going to start is we're just going to start with a new empty simulation. So the first step of any system is to have a star. So we're going to start by clicking this add icon in the bottom right. Then on, then there's all of these different icons of different objects you can put in the system. So we're going to click on stars. And you could technically pick any star, but if you want to have a habitable planet, you're going to want a yellow main sequence star. See if you hover over the sun, it says yellow main sequence. So you can either pick one of these that are already yellow main sequence, or you can click random known star and see if you get one and I did first try so if you right click on it it'll show the stats so you're over here make sure this is on Sun and then make sure this mass is anywhere from 0 0.8 to 1.5 and then once you've done that you can name it whatever you'd like and a good thing to do is to come down here to this age and just make this zero this will make the star last longer all right then what we're going to do after that is click view down here and then habitable. And what this is going to do, if we zoom out, you'll see these different colored rings. So we want to put our habitable planet inside of this green ring to make sure that the temperature is not too hot or cold. And in this new update, so if you come over here to planets and then random rocky, it'll change these rings based on how big your planet is. So what we actually want to do is keep clicking random rocky until the size of the rings were about the same as when we started. And if you can't remember, just right click and it'll show you the original size. So here's the size of the rings normally. So if we click add, do you see these shrunk? Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, just bigger. So that'll probably work. We'll see. Yeah, that'll work. So what we're going to do after we have our planet is put it anywhere inside of this green ring. We're going to put it right here and then right click to get rid of that menu. All right, we can turn this habitable icon off. Now what we're going to want to do is double click on the planet and then we can zoom in. And we can see our planet. All right, for this part, we're going to want our time step down here in the bottom left. Turn it up to about one day. A second all right and yours could be spinning faster or slower than this but it'll be okay all right if you right click on the planet it'll open this menu you can name it whatever you'd like I'm just gonna keep it as that in this mass section you're gonna want to make sure that this is on earth and then set this anywhere from 0 0.6 to 2 so I'm gonna do 1.5 all right so you saw it just got bigger next thing you're going to want to do is scroll down to this rotational period and orbital period this rotational period is how long a day is on your planet you don't want it to take too long to spin around or one side of it is going to heat up a lot faster than the other anything over 10 days is going to be too much so if i set this to 20 days and then we come to the surface and watch the temperature you'll see that it had it pulsates See how there's this big chunk of red and then it's colder right here. If we speed up time more, you'll be able to see it. This pulsating, we don't want that. So what we're going to do is make sure that this make sh So what we're going to do is make sure this rotational period is anywhere from 12 hours to three days. So I'm going to do two days and that should work pretty good. See if we come back to the surface, we'll see that it stables out a lot more. All right, you can also see that these blue bars on the top and the bottom are growing and shrinking. That is because of the seasons on the planet. Um, so you can change the seasons based on the how tilted the axis is on the planet. So if you click this little icon down here, the transform icon, it'll show these blue markers at the poles. The more straight up your planet is, the less the seasons will have an effect. Grab anywhere, grab the planet, but make sure you don't grab this inside ring because that'll move the actual planet. So just grab right here and you can change the axis tilt 
see if we put it straight up then you can see these blue bars aren't moving very much but if we tilt it more you can see that they start to move more all right so for ideal habitability you want it just a little tilted probably about right here but you can do whatever you want all right so once you've done whatever tilt you like you can close this menu by clicking on that again we can go back to overview and we can see this orbital period represents how long a year is for the planet so at 6.8 months that's how long it's going to take for the planet to go completely around the star so you can change this just when you change it note that it's going to change how big the orbit is see if we zoom out we can see that if we change this it'll make the orbit bigger just make sure when you're changing it that it stays inside of this green so you could change it to be bigger or smaller but just keep it in that green so I'm just gonna keep it about right here all right um, all of these you don't have to worry about these are like the gravity interactions and we're just gonna keep that the same so after we've done that, you, I'm going to turn this habitable off. Come over here into the surface. And then scroll down to the sea level. So we're going to zoom in again. This is where we're going to change how the planet looks. So I'm actually going to slow down time to pretty slow. It's a couple hours every second. Maybe a little slower than that too. Pretty still. Okay. So you can grab this slider and just slide it up and you'll see water start to appear. You're just going to want to slide it up until most of the planet is covered in water. Probably about right, about right here. Okay, and then after you've done that, you get to start to see what your planet's actually going to look like. So the next thing you would want to do is click on Appearance over here. And you can change what the land masses of the planet look like. So you can also add city lights right here. So you just click on this and it'll show city lights on the background. And if you don't like the way they look, you can open this. You can open this drop down menu and then click randomize and it'll change the way they look. Um, I like that one. So we're going to go with that one. All right. And then you can click on this little drop down menu for the solid surface and it'll let you change the different colors on the planet based on the elevation. So the low elevations is all covered in water. So you don't really have to worry too much about that one. It's more just the high in the middle. So it looks like most of this is around this color. So this is going to be like the main color of our planet. And I want it more of a green color because of like the organics that are on it. So let's make it like a foresty color, like a dark green around there. Then for this middle color, I'm going to add more of like a brownish color to try to like get it. Oh yeah. And it looks kind of like weird, like fake. It'll look a lot better once we get an atmosphere on there. So just do it however you'd like. And then what else you can do is you can change this contrast to try to get different like sections of it closed off. I'm going to do it about right there. Next, what I would recommend to do is to come down and click tools then click planetscaping and this will open this menu where you can change what the continents of your planets look like so let's say i don't like this island right here i would come to elevation and then click remove and it'll remove the elevation right here you can see how it turned red because that's what our low elevation is set to and if it's small enough the water will just kind of like fill itself in but if you want to speed it up, you can click liquid water, add, and then just throw water on top of it. So I kind of like it, how it looks. I don't like this weird line here. So I'm going to go to elevation, remove, and just kind of get rid of this line. And you can see the water start to fill it in just over time you can speed up time a little bit to see that water fill in faster and if it's going fast and it doesn't seem to fill in you can either try to take more elevation off or just add water over top of it so yeah these don't seem to be disappearing so I'm just gonna add water on top of them
All right, so once you've shaped your planet how you've liked it, you can click this X and it'll leave. We'll go back to the main menu. Next, go back to surface and scroll down some more. This average albedo is going to change how much the object reflects light and this will change this effective temperature. So you're gonna wanna change this until this effective temperature is around 15 degrees. So it doesn't have to be exact. We'll go 14.8, that's pretty good. You can see it's slowly rising, that's okay. Don't worry about it. All right, next step is to add the atmosphere. So if we scroll down some more, we'll see this atmosphere mass. What you're gonna wanna do is change this units change the units to earth's atmosphere then check how big the mass is compared to earth of your planet so mine's 1.5 times the mass of the earth so if we go back we're going to want to make this 1.5 times the mass of the earth you can see the atmosphere makes it look a lot better all right this surface pressure you want to be pretty close to this one make sure it's set on atm it's that's good enough all right, after that, come over to composition. You can change the iron to silicate ratio if you would like. It doesn't matter too much. All right, you can scroll down and see that our Earth similarity is at 92.5 and the life likelihood is at 65.9. I'm gonna explain how to add a magnetic field. So first thing you wanna do is turn show magnetosphere on and magnetosphere size. So what you're gonna do is set this to Earth and then make it 2.5 Earths. And that should work for pretty much any body that's in the range of 0.6 to 2 Earths. And you can see that this is the protective shield of the magnetosphere around your planet. All right, you can turn this off because you don't need to see it anymore. All right, so your planet is pretty much done. There's a couple more things you could do if you would like. You could add a moon, add a couple moons. You could add rings. So I'm going to show you how to do those really quick. So to add a moon, you're going to want to highlight your planet like this. You're going to want time going decently slow. You can zoom out, click the add again, go to moons. You can pick random moon, random small moon. You can pick a, a moon that's already made. I'm going to go with random moon. And you're not going to want it too close. You would think it would be like right here. But that's not right. In reality, you're going to want it decently far away. I'm going to put mine right here. We're just going to have one moon for it. We can zoom in and see what the moon looks like. Oh, this looks pretty cool. I might leave it how it is. Let's look at the appearance. Is that water on it? Yeah, it's got some water. But I assume when I speed up time, this water is going to freeze or evaporate. But yeah, it's going down. Okay, there's no water left. Which is expected. That's looking pretty cool. I'm going to keep it how it looks. But if you want, you can change the appearance on it. If You can you can add city lights if you want. Um, so yeah, adding moons is really easy. And then for rings, how you add rings is you click on your object again. Double click to focus on it and then you're going to click add again come over here to rings and you can pick what kind of rings you want so for example let's do realistic this is a good one to add click on it and then you click on your object again and then click add ring and it'll add these rings to the object Um, let's say you didn't want those rings anymore. Let's say we wanted Jupiter's rings. That's what Jupiter's rings looks like. Or Saturn's rings. Alright, so that is going to be the end of the tutorial. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer as many as I can. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like on it. It actually really helps the channel. And thank you for watching.